you can have that list automatically start to feed into high level to, to trigger that campaign. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the High Level Spotlight Sessions, where we showcase awesome marketers doing awesome marketing. Today, we are showcasing an awesome new integrations partner. I've got Justin McGill here. He is the founder and CEO of LeadFuse, which is essentially a search engine for leads that contains over half a billion profiles. So, Justin, thanks so much for coming on to chat with us. Thanks, man. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, um, Let's talk about this. You guys have been around for 14 years. You've been doing this. Uh, well, since 2014. So, uh, ah, okay. I thought I going on seven years somewhere. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Still, that's pretty, uh, that's Still pretty long time for the space. Um, talk to me about how you got into it. Yeah. So, uh, I'll give you kind of, I guess a little longer of a story and you could edit it if, if desired, but basically I, I started off in 08 running a marketing agency myself. I say that, but I was basically just a solo consultant, right? But um, always represented that I had an agency. And um, and so over the years with that, uh, I wanted to obviously scale that out and, and have an actual agency, right? At some point. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I knew I needed to focus on on sales. And I was, I started off with websites and uh, just realized that, you know, I wanted to add the recurring revenue model. And so added SEO to the mix and really started to focus on that. But, you know, when it comes to acquiring new clients, I, I didn't want to spend the time myself cold calling. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, it's awesome. It works great, but it just was not going to be something I wanted to do. And so I really just started reaching out via email and over time started to build some automation there where uh, I would input like a keyword, you know, jewelry store Phoenix. Right. And then because I was focusing more on on local SEO type campaigns and then would pull in all the results from Google, like the top 60 results, saving the first one. And then I, I would have this, this system automatically generate an email with, you know, the domain, the keyword, you know, saying, Hey, you know, this company's ranking number one for this. Now mm -hmm. I'd like to help you raise from 38th to, you know, ho hopefully take over that top spot. Right. And, and gain more traffic. And so I had that running where it would go scrape the website for, for email addresses and contact information which were great, um, especially back then. I mean, there just wasn't people doing cold email, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And so I could stand out that way. And, you know, I just was able to generate deals on, on autopilot. Over time, that became a little less effective because you're, you're going into, you know, kind of like the receptionist and everything, right? You're getting right. info at and contact at type emails. And so I, I kind of realized over time, I needed a way to get to the specific key stakeholders in those, in those businesses. And so that's when LinkedIn really started to come along. Uh, more and more people were getting set up on, on LinkedIn. And so I was able to kind of reverse engineer that and, and work from that um, to, you know, and typically you'll see like it's first name at company name or something like that, right. For an email. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, started to kind of have some set success there. And so instead of like jumping into a SaaS right away, I, I basically started this with a done for you service where, I would pull in all the, the leads that you have in your target market. And then I would okay. write the cold emails and send them. And then I would just forward over the interested prospects, right? That's how gotcha. that yeah. whole workflow was, was done. And then, you know, obviously my intention was to roll it out as a, as a, you know, a standalone software platform that did all the automation for you. So we ended up, um, you know, just launching that as a, as a, as a software and kind of transitioning the done for you clients over into that and, growing from there. But that's how, you know, that's how it all started. The challenge is like, so we had email and everything kind of built in to the platform. And I actually stripped that out a few years back because like keeping the data update uh, updated is like super hard to do. It's, it's, it's very expensive for one, like to get all the info from LinkedIn, which you don't get contact info, but we use that as kind of a, a I don't know, a source of truth, if you will, for somebody's job history. Okay. And whatnot. And so, um, you know, to keep that updated on a regular basis. So for us, we do hundreds of millions of profiles on a quarterly basis. Um, you know, we just, we were like lacking some of the features on the cold email side. And then, so we'd stop on the data. Next thing you know, it's now six months out hmm. from the next data update and, you know, it just was causing problems. So we scrapped everything else, just wanted to focus solely on the data, um, you know, and try to keep that up to date as, as much as possible, expand on it, you know, from there, but that's the long-winded version of, of lead fuse is a uh, well, talk to me about that. I, you know, I think it's interesting and it's probably good to point out 
how do you feel like, you know, I don't want you to call anybody out, but as far as you, competitors that do similar things, mm-hmm. you guys are refreshing your inventory quarterly, it sounds like. Yeah. And I'd be surprised if that was common across the industry, right? It's not because it's so expensive to do. So uh, just transparently, so like there's a company called Bright Data, used to be Luminati, where uh, they have, you can plug into millions of different IP addresses, right? And that's basically what you have to do because you'll get blocked trying to scrape LinkedIn like right away. I mean, you're not going to get very far. So um, luckily, you know, we had at that point gotten basically all the the LinkedIn URLs and, and figured out that whole process. But to do that, you need their $30,000 a month plan to rotate IPs and everything else to handle that volume. And it goes beyond that at the at hundreds of millions of views. And that's just to grab the data, right? It's not to parse it. It's not with contact information. That's just like the root profile data. Mm-hmm. Then we've got partnerships that we spend a lot of money on to gather uh, contact information and, and mobile numbers and emails and all that, right? Other social profiles and, and marry that to the data that we have already and enrich that further. And so then, you know, we match all that, we verify it, and then we put that, you know, in our lead pool. But, you know, to do that stuff, I mean, it's just, like I said, it's so expensive. That's why people will oftentimes update it once a year, once every two years. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is people are changing jobs at like 22% a year is the average turnover rate. And that's before COVID, right? So, uh, you know, you can only imagine the, the, the out of date data that's out there now. So, uh, you know, that, that's kind of, I think why most companies don't keep it updated. I I saw on your site, it was pretty illuminating actually to see the amount of data you start with, right? You start with like something near a billion and yeah, through your big, processes yeah. of valid, oh, almost two, and, yeah. and through the process of validation, everything that you guys do, you weed it down to like 500 million. Yep. Is that yep. essentially what comes out as good data? Yep. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's pretty yeah. amazing. You get an idea of how much kind of crap is out there that you have to sift through. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we throw most of it away. I mean, it's just not even something we use. And that's why we don't track every single company, right? I mean, we've got 12, 14 million companies in the system. Uh, but there's millions more that we don't have. Um, and that's because, you know, either A, we, we don't have it for some reason, we haven't come across it, or B, um, we just don't have enough information to feel comfortable with it, right? So we're not doing anything with it that way either. So, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of different profiles or duplicates or junk or whatever. I mean, so mm-hmm. we kind of want to keep it, you know, as clean as we can. Um, nice. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of work going on in the background for that. Well, so we're excited that you guys um, built an integration for high level. Talk about it a little bit. Yeah. So we actually had a a mutual customer reach out and be, you know, they just said, Hey, you should really talk to Sean over at high level and see what those guys are doing. Uh, Seems like a great fit. And so when we, so given my agency background, like Rand Fishkin is a customer, uh, you know, just gave us an awesome testimonial and stuff. It was like, okay, you know, we, we really need to go all in on agencies and really try to serve that audience. And so when I saw what high level was doing, uh, I hadn't come across it before. I was actually reaching, I actually talked to someone else um, like, Hey, have you heard of these guys? You know, after the, um, the, the customer reached out to tell me that I started looking into it. I was like, Are these guys as legit as they seem, you know, and, and I just got, got awesome feedback. And, and so really explored it further, uh, saw what we could do together from a, you know, passing that lead data over it and into high level so that users could trigger campaigns and everything, you know, multi-channel campaigns, even more effective. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to pursue that right away. And Sean immediately responded, um, you know, we set up a call the very next day and, and, you know, that this is all within like the last few weeks. So it's, it's pretty new, but, uh, we're, we're pretty excited by it for sure. Yeah. You guys, uh, put it together pretty quickly, I feel like, which is awesome. And so, yeah. um, it, the community should be excited. We, you know, we've got lots of uh, cold outreach masters within the community, a lot of new agency entrepreneurs getting into it, looking for places to do prospecting. Um, being as you've done it for so long, you have any cold outreach tips, any, uh, any hacks or, or subject lines you love, anything you could share with the community? Yeah, man. So, I mean, there's, there's so many, um, so what I could do too is I, I could maybe even go through the app a little bit and kind of show how you would use some of the data in, in your cold email outreach to keep sure, it personalized cool. and everything else. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give one like offhand that, that I know uh, worked well and still works well, which is, you know, at the end of the day, 
every single company website has something wrong from an SEO perspective. Like that is like a for sure known thing. Um, and if you can't find something, then, then you probably need to study SEO and whatnot a little more maybe, cause there, there's just always something. And so, um, generally like something along the lines of, you know, I was checking out xyz.com and noticed a few things that were wrong with your website. Um, you know, especially like right now is actually a great time because Google's coming out with an update, right? Coming in, well, it was supposed to be May. Now it's going to be June to August, but um, with their core vitals update and, and you know, page speed scores and everything else, right? So um, even tying in something like that to add a little urgency, because that was always the challenge with when, you know, with selling SEO, like there's not like an urgent, okay, that's, we've got to do something next week. Um, and so I know for me, uh, with websites and stuff back in the day, we would find something, right? So it could be an accessibility issue. It could be, you know, something that we would try to, um, you know, add a little urgency to it. And then obviously uh, hook in like the recurring dollars, you know, after that, but, you know, letting them know you've got something, you'd like to send them a video kind of walking through a few, few ideas on their website. Um, you know, if you're trying to do it at scale, that's how I would do it. If you're, if you've got, you know, a targeted list of a hundred potential clients or something in your area. I mean, I would probably go through those and put a loom together in advance. I say loom, but any sort of video in advance, like just reaching out, Hey, you know, here's a few things I noticed. I uh, would love to talk about it further. Um, so, you know, generally something like that will, you know, you want to pique their curiosity a little bit. And, um, you know, the, the, the other big thing I'll, I'll say is not to do is like ask for a call in your first cold email, like the number one goal of a cold email is to start a conversation. All you're trying to do is start a conversation. You're not trying right. to close Get a deal. some sort of response. Yeah, absolutely. Anything. So all you want them to do is respond to your email, not, not book a time. That's such a huge ask of somebody to do. If you can get that, that's pretty amazing. Obviously those are probably pretty warm deals. Uh, but generally, you know, you want to send them, you know, can I send you this resource? Can I, you know, send you this video? Can I send you some ideas? Like something like that to just start the conversation. Um, you know, but that, that should be your goal and that's a win. You know, if you get that response, I mean, that starts something, right. You put them in the CRM and, and lead nurture them and do what you need to do. But, um, you know, that, that should be the, the focus of your cold emails. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes it. a ton of sense. But I like the angle of, of, of going after things that, you know, the large majority of businesses are not doing right. And that even yeah. got me thinking around. I love the fact that the high level chat widget, the web chat widget opens up a, an SMS conversation. Whereas right. I feel like the majority of the industry is still focused around web chat, which kind of stinks, right? Because you, you know, you type something in and there's never anybody on the other end and you're right. like, Am I just going to sit here all day or right. what was the point of this? Right. Or, yeah. or, or chat bots where it's just like immediate, you're like, ah, no, like I want a person. And so I feel like for high level users, that could be an, an interesting angle, knowing that the large majority of the industry is not leveraging live chat that takes you straight into SMS, you know, things like that, that, you know, hopefully these ideas are getting your wheels turning. If you're watching of ways to, to be able to do it at scale, you know, um, I love taking the time to do individualized, but you know, if you're just getting going or, or you need to do it at scale, then these are great tactics. Cool. So yeah. do you want to, uh, sh Oh, go ahead. Did you have something else to add? Yeah. I was just going to say on top of that, like SMS is something that is, is really underutilized from a B2B perspective. I mean, you, you, having it on mm -hmm. the website and everything is awesome. And uh, communicating with your customers. I like, I know for me, like I would much prefer to not hop on the phone. I want to just text you back and forth. Right. Um, but you know, like to, to send Everyone those texts. Does. <laughs> yeah. In fact, when I reached out to Sean, I texted him first, um, nice. sent him a text. I didn't even email, you know, uh, he responded in two minutes and you know, we took it to email and boom, you know, mm -hmm. uh, very, very easy. So, um, you know, I, I think text from a B2B perspective is even very underutilized. hundred percent. So do you want to share your screen and show us around real quick? Yeah, absolutely. Let me, uh, get this set up here. All right. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Sweet. So essentially in LeadFuse, there's like two ways to search for leads. One's account-based and one is a market-based search. Account-based is when like, you know, your dream 100, 1000, whatever it is. Um, and you can import all of those domains right here all at once. Mm -hmm. um, the other, you know, you, you maybe like you even want to do, all right, like something like this. 
um, because you know the specific person you're after, right? So you could do that, run the search. And this is going to check our lead pool, look for any matches. And there he is, right? So now, boom, I could add him to a list. And, you know, now he's going to get my messages or something, right? Um, the other thing that's really cool that you could do here, actually, especially for an agency, is use this from a like a link building perspective. So you could pull down a bunch of domains from Hrefs or SEMrush or something of competitors that are linking to another website, right? And so that's interesting, um, yeah. Or, or vice versa, I should, you know, where the other websites link to a competitor. So then mm -hmm. you grab all of those, upload that here, and then just go here and find someone in marketing, right? At, at all of those domains, you can get someone in, in, in marketing and reach out that way. Or you could, you know, th this is basically a keyword field, right? So hmm. you can input, it's going to look for the job title and anything you put in here is going to be in the job title. So maybe you put like, you know, I don't know link building or something like that, right? Um, you could just type in a keyword. We, we group a bunch of similar titles together uh, just to help make it easier. And you can go through and, you know, erase things that don't make sense and, you know, whatever. Uh, but then now you can reach out, say, hey, you know, I noticed on one of your blogs, you, re you actually linked to a competitor of ours. We have similar content. I'd love to work out a link exchange or something like that with you uh, if you're up for it. Right. And so, um, yeah, that's you know, really just, smart. Yeah. It could be used for a link building campaign or for your clients or whatever. All right. So that's the account based search. The other is market based. So this helps you identify like your total addressable market. And we start this off with three different sections here. And we start with company information. And so you can look up by industry, you'll see similar industries as, as you would find in LinkedIn, for example, uh, different locations, employee size ranges, if they spend money on AdWords, so we get this data from SEM Rush. And so mm -hmm. you could pull in, you know, you could use that as a qualifier, for example. Another thing you could do is maybe uh, if they're hiring for like marketing help, right? Like for agencies, that would be um, ideal or certain technologies. So if they're using HubSpot, you know, like, you know, that could be expensive, right? So um, that could be hmm. something you want to leverage. Yeah, to, that's interesting for sure. Reach out. That's the thing too, is like, try to use this data as a way, not just to qualify, but actually reference that as personalization in your outreach, right? Like if you know they're using HubSpot, reference that. If you know they're spending money on paid ads, reference that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can help them offset some of their paid ad budget or, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. Totally. And then the, the people criteria here is to, you know, narrow that down further to specific people within the companies that you've, you know, targeted up here. So, you know, if you're after the owner, for example, uh, you know, you can add that here. Uh, some of these are for like recruit, like we, we have users all over. I mean, so a lot of times it's salespeople for sure. Um, a lot of like recruiters will use us to find potential job candidates for like passive, you know, recruiting. Um, mm -hmm. So you'll see things like estimated salary, time and latest role and stuff that generally is for recruiters. Estimated salary. We actually get that from, um, you know, job postings and other people in their area, like other peers that they have job title wise in their area and kind of give you, give you some sort of a range there. Um, but yeah, so wow, yeah, so, you could go all sorts of ways with this. You mentioned yeah, Rand definitely. Fishkin. I love his spark Toro product. You could yeah. generate a list of, of companies through that, that are relevant to you and then ex import it into here to get the context within those companies. It's right. Really interesting. Yeah, man. So then, you, you know, you add those, add those people to a list and uh, that'll show up here. And so like we have the high level integration, right? So um, this is now in here. It's uh, it's featured. So when you go to the integrations page, you'll see, you'll see that at the top, you can integrate nice. it. Nice. Um, so I, I should probably, um, well, I'll show you an example. So basically like we have a, a cold email only tool called Limlist, and this would work the same way with high level where you have all your different lists here and you can come and connect it. So in this case, it'd be high level and this would pull in your different campaigns in high level. And then you can have that list automatically start to feed into high level to, to trigger that campaign. So now nice. you know, the leads that you're adding are getting added to high level. They're getting your emails and texts and you know, whatever else you're, you're doing within high levels campaigns. And that can happen automatically. But then not only that, you can actually build your list automatically. So for example, this particular one, I have what we call FuseBot. And 
it's saying, okay, look for these job titles and add 25 new leads each day to this list that match these specifics that I've chosen. And then FuseBot will go try to validate their information and everything. Once that happens, they'll get added to the list. Once they get added to the list, I have it integrated with high level. So it'll start a campaign. Mm, and now that's cool. So you're handling, you're handling the drip up front. So you're not, you know, making sure you're not triggering spam filters or doing anything crazy. You're just right. doing a nice steady flow of 25 a day. That's pretty cool. Exactly. Yeah. And Very so that cool. can happen, you know, without any input, you know, once you have it all set up, you know, so it's, uh, it can be hands off. So now you've got, you know, potentially different campaigns for uh, different clients for your own purposes. If you want to target different industries and, you know, have different messages and feed different campaigns in high level. So you've just got, you know, a system kind of running in the background. That's, that's the idea is to have this be like this utility. Uh, and then obviously high level, you know, you can add custom menu links, right? So now you can, you could have, mm. have lead views right inside of your high level account. Um, we, we initially like it's like protected from um, iframe embedding and everything else, but we, we ended up um, being able to work that out. And so now oh, nice. you can, yeah, you can add that into high level and just, you know, do your prospecting right there um, within, you know, within the high level app. So pretty. Uh, Very pretty cool. Neat. I love it. Yeah, well, I mean, this is great, Justin. It looks super snappy and uh, clearly there's a ton of data there that you've got access to. Yeah, man, definitely. Well, Try we really appreciate you guys um, building the integration. I love that we're, we've got uh, shared customers already. And if you guys are watching and you're interested in this, it's leadfuse.com with a Z. So F-U-Z-E.com. Head over even there. One, even go to ahead. go beyond that. So here's, so here's our, our, like our standard two plans. We had a slider and it like plummeted conversion rates and everything. And so we just okay. tried to really simplify this and say, okay, you get, you know, pick from one of these two plans. So uh, through high level, I was talking with Sean about what we could do to kind of make it a little more special for you guys. Uh, but basically, there's a couple of things. One, if you go to leadfuse.com slash high level, you'll see an agency specific unlimited plan, which is not available publicly. And so nice. um, you would get unlimited list and unlimited uh, lead credit. So you can add however many leads you want. You could do it. You could resell that to clients, let them log in. Uh, under your account and set up their own list. You could do it for them, whatever, right? Just unlimited, which is great if you're doing like paid ads and custom audiences and everything else, because we give you personal emails as well, which will have a high match rate in Facebook versus something like company emails only, um, mm. which people don't register on Facebook with their company email. So uh, we give you personal emails. You can build large custom audience lists and everything um, and, and deliver ads to them. I mean, I've done it to specific companies even. Uh, but you know, that, that's, that's an option. So it's a completely unlimited plan for you guys. Um, there's even a, so we have that for agencies, but even through high level, there's, there's a deal there. So, um, if you go to leadfuse.com slash high level, you'll see that now nice. on the, uh, default plan, if like, you don't want to, cause we asked for at least a 12 month commitment on unlimited cause it is unlimited access. Um, if you're not ready for that, even on the scaling plan, um, that's 497 a month on the month to month. I'll actually personally help you get set up. I'll sync to your high level campaign. I'll do a, a cold email review of your sequence, provide feedback, a bunch of resources. Like I said, we were a done for you agency seven years ago with that stuff. Uh, it's how I scaled my agency to begin with. So I've got a lot of insight there. Um, and we'll, we'll put some videos together going through your account and everything. So um, that's, wow. that's, you know, specifically through you guys. So through, you know, through high level. So, um, you know, just. Wow, that's super generous. Well, you guys yeah, heard man. it leadfuse.com with a z slash high level or go high level just high level perfect <laughs> we're it's amazing how many people it's like 50 50 i know they think of us, i see they think go high level and, high you know level. hl exactly yeah. yeah yeah no we're both <laughs> awesome well justin thanks so much for coming on to talk about it this looks great absolutely man appreciate it thank you guys for watching we will see you in the next episode